Welcome. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So in this case, I have 1 plus secant squared of x times sine squared of x equals uh, secant squared of x. And again, what I want to do is you know, simplify these. And automatically, I see the sine squared and secant squared and secant squared again. And I automatically know I want to see if I can convert these using my Pythagorean identities. Remember, anytime I see the squareds, any trigonometric term squared, I automatically think Pythagorean identities. So if I was going to do this, remember that the Pythagorean identity for uh, secant is going to be 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, that'd be like of x, right? So when, yeah, I got that right. Okay, that was, it's been a while. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and look at that and see, well, um, maybe I could rewrite secant squared. Or my other option, actually, is I could have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. Now, I actually kind of like the second identity better. The reason being is because I know if I rewrite sine in terms of cosine, then I know that my cosine is going to be multiplied by my secant. And I know cosine and secant, those are reciprocal identities. So e initially, what you guys got to think about this thinking process, initially, I wanted to get rid of the secants, right? But then what I noticed is sine squared, if I use my Pythagorean identity for that, I can actually multiply that by secant. And that will probably get me to 1 quicker, or at least get me to secant quicker than before. So to solve this, for solve sine squared, I'm going to have to subtract a cosine squared on both sides. So therefore, I have sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. Now what I'm going to do is substitute in 1 minus cosine squared of x. So I have 1 plus secant squared of x times 1 minus cosine squared of x equals secant squared of x. All right, well, we don't really need to keep on writing the right-hand side. I'm just going to keep on simplifying. So anyways, I know that my secant squared of x, I'm going to have to use Pythi uh, not Pythi <laughs> distributive property here. So by applying distributive property, I have 1. And then secant squared times 1 is going to be positive secant squared of x. And then secant squared times a negative cosine squared is going to be a negative secant squared of x times cosine squared of x. Well, I know I can rewrite secant in terms of cosine. So that's going to be 1 over cosine squared. And let's just do it in a separate one, right? Why, why be lazy, Mr. McLogan? Let's just rewrite it. So 1 plus secant squared of x minus 1 over cosine squared times cosine squared of x. Well, we know that cosine is going to be over 1. Therefore, those divide into 1. So I have 1 plus secant squared of x minus 1. Well, now my 1s. Those add up to 0, and I'm just left with secant squared of x equals secant squared of x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you verify your identity by using your Pythagorean identities. Thanks.